<laughs> Howdy, partner. <laughs> My name is Kieran Purcell. I'm from Baileybor in County Cavan. We're going to the Carton Hotel to pick up Christopher West. The ache is there in every human being to want to understand what it means to be male and female, what it means to love, what this whole question of our sexuality is. So this theology of the body provides a really dramatic proposal that ultimately is an invitation to faith because the truth of love is ultimately revealed through the God who is love. And this God who is love created us in his image and likeness precisely to learn what it means to love. Christopher, we in the Apostolate are so happy that you've come to see us. And we're all so collectively excited about the work you're doing. Thank you, Anne. So praise God that we've come together today. And what I'm hoping is you'll tell us a little bit about Theology of the Body. Sure. Mm -hmm. the Theology of the Body is a collection of 129 talks that John Paul II delivered right at the start of his pontificate mm -hmm. on the meaning of our embodiment. Why are we created male and female mm -hmm. as embodied creatures? Mm -hmm. And what does that mean? If we're going to talk about love and responsibility on the one hand, and we're going to talk about Deus Caritas Est, that beautiful encyclical of Pope Benedict, God is love, mm -hmm. we have to recognize the theology, the body here is in the middle. Mm -hmm. What are we learning here? Love and responsibility. We're all called to love. Mm -hmm. But love is not merely following an instinct to please myself. Right. If we just follow that, we're going to end up using people, mm -hmm. and we won't take responsibility for our love. Mm -hmm. We have to reclaim this truth here that our bodies reveal this great mystery of love. We've run out of that love through original sin, that wine. We're called to drink it again through the mystery of the sacramental life of the church. We do drink this new wine. We do get drunk on God's love. Yes. And that enables us to live, as Pope Benedict says in Deus Caritas Est, the integration of eros and agape. Eros is that human love, mm -hmm. agape is that divine love. In the beginning, they were perfectly integrated. Mm -hmm. Original sin has ruptured them, but in and through Christ, mm -hmm. we drink deeply of that new wine, mm -hmm. agape love, mm -hmm. and slowly but surely, through, as all the saints attest, mm -hmm. through painful purifications, that agape love takes hold of our hearts, and our eros, our yearning, mm -hmm becomes more and more pure. Mm -hmm. And we learn in and through Christ to be true sacrificial gifts to one another. It's a long journey, as we all know, anyone on the journey. But it's magnificent, and it allows for process. Yes. It allows yes. for process. So people shouldn't listen and say, that's way beyond me. I'm not gonna uh, aim for that because it's beyond me. Because we know in truth, it's not beyond any of us. That's right. We've been given what we need. Well, we have to get to the notion of sexual freedom. Our culture talks a big line about sexual freedom. But what does the culture mean by sexual freedom? It typically means do whatever you want to do, whenever you want to do it, with whomever you want to do it, without ever saying no. Yes. To which I respond, hold on a minute. I thought freedom was the ability to say yes and the ability to say no. <laughs> If you don't have the ability to say no to something, are you really free? Hmm. Is the alcoholic who cannot say no to his next drink free? Or is he in chains? Enslaved. He's enslaved. Yes. Right. So if you look at what our culture is promoting as sexual freedom, take a closer look. Mm -hmm. It's actually sexual addiction. Mm -hmm. Men and women are not able to say no to their desires. And we call this freedom. And when our sexual desires are so disordered as they often are, mm -hmm. it can often be times just easier to say no to all of it yes. than it is to actually learn. I have, as a married man and as a married woman, mm -hmm. you and I, we have to learn with our spouses how to live a virtuous yeah. sexual life. Yeah. And that's where natural family planning is so magnificent. It's like an unclaimed treasure in the church. Amen. Mm -hmm.
You see, we will worship whatever we think satisfies the ache. That's what we're going to worship. Mm -hmm. That's why we worship sex in our world today. Mm -hmm. We are worshiping what we think will satisfy the ache. Now, again, here's why I'm, I'm actually hopeful. In our sexually broken, sexually addicted, sexually idolatrous world, guess what? Behind every idol, we discover the desire for the true God. It's just gotten twisted up. What we do in becoming witnesses to love is we learn how to help the world untwist the distortion mm -hmm. so we can see the truth of what we're really looking for. And this is what Paul did in Athens. Mm -hmm. He studied their idols. Really? And that's what it says right in the Acts of the Apostles. Mm. He studied their idols and he mm. said to the people, I can tell from studying your idols yes, right. that yeah. you are a religious people. Right. And he says, let me show you what you're really looking for. That's the gift of this theology of the body. It says to the sexually addicted world, let me show you what you're really looking for. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God.